What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to discuss a question that some of you asked me on my fork uh, video, the sub processes that I built on Node.js and the question was uh, if I have main process and I spun up multiple sub processes, right, uh, child processes and I have one main TCP connection or a WebSocket connection or an HTTP connection on my main process. Can my child processes consume this socket connection, consume this TCP connection and send information on top of it or not? That's the question. So in this video, I'm gonna try to answer that question and uh, also provide you with some caveats. So how about we jump into it? So guys, the idea of having a main process and spun up child processes or even threads, if you're kinda doing a multi-threaded application, is to share this common memory that the main process have, right? And uh, yeah, you're gonna run into a problem of race conditions and two threads writing to the same variable or the same object, which uh, you can get into and say, okay, I'm gonna make my application thread safe or process safe. But this is not that story here. Even if you made your application thread safe or um, child process safe, right? And you use some sort of a mutexes and you acquire explosive locks on your variables and you only have one entity updating your stuff at a time. Socket or TCP connection is a little bit different and you really need to be careful with this. And uh, HTTP 1.1 have the same problem today. If you have a socket connection, which is basically a logical channel between a client and a server, there is a port listening on the server and there is uh, some sort of file descriptor at the client that says, okay, I am connected to this, right? So that means anything you write on this socket, it will be transmitted to the server. And the server will process that request and send back information back to the client. So why is it so bad if I have multiple child processes or thread writing to the same socket? Here's the problem. The problem is, these socket connections were designed to be a single user kind of a thing. That means if I send a request, right, the process will, the server will process that request and send back the information for that request. However, there is nothing that identifies a request per se. You can start sending multiple stuff garbage to that socket connection and the server will start receiving it and then it will send back the information back. But how do you know which response belong to which request? If you start doing that, if you start using that socket TCP connection or HTTP connection, and you use your child process to send multiple requests from these child processes, you will run into big trouble. And that's the main limitation in HTTP 1.1. You can, that's why the HTTP protocol says, oh, you can only send one request on a given TCP connection and everybody else, if you want to send another t request, you gotta wait. Yeah, there's some sort of a hacks that browsers came up with called pipelining where you can send multiple requests, but you cannot guarantee the response coming back is for which request. And that's the essential problem with sockets and TCP, right? So if you have one process and you're sending information on that socket or that TCP connection or that HTTP connection or that web socket, that's fine. But if you're ha if that TCP connection is used to send multiple information, how do you know that the response that just, just came in is for that child process or for this child process or for the main process? Well, you might argue that I am going to start tagging my request with a request ID and my server will start responding back with information about the request. So that if the response come back, I know that, oh, this response is for this request. And that absolutely works. A little bit of an overhead at, that, at your end, but 
it works. So if you want multiple child processes and the main process that have the actual TCP connection to actually use these things, then just be careful of this, right? Because you cannot guarantee. That's the same problem why we do not, in a web application, we do not use a single TCP connection to the database, right? So if you have a database right here, and you have your web server right here, or your framework, and you have your clients, these clients will make multiple requests, and these requests, most of the time, they are concurrent, and this web server or web framework will start executing queries on that TCP connection, and the response that comes back, we have no idea who is the requester of that, okay? That's why when you have a TCP connection at the back end or databases, you need to use pooling. And when you start sending information on that socket or that TCP connection, you better lock it down and say, this thing is reserved. That's why where pooling really comes into handy in, 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 de in back end database web applications, where you're gonna reserve a connection from a pool of TCP connections to the database and says, okay, that's mine now write something to it and get back information from it and then release it back to the pool, right? So that's the process of this. And I talked about um, where quick uh, protocol can actually be extremely helpful with these kind of applications where multiple users, you would call them our clients, are using a single TCP connection, right? Quick and HTTP2. Let's say HTTP2 actually solved this problem very elegantly with the idea of streams. And we talked about it many, many, many times in this channel, guys. And check out the HTTP2 playlist. So what HTTP2 did, says, no, you know what? We're going to implement exactly what we said here. Each request will be tagged with a request ID. And the request ID, think of it as they called it stream okay so that same pipe client server but there are multiple streams in the tcp connection and they have their own headers i don't know about HTTP headers here actual header packet headers and they are tagged with the stream id so every packet that you send will be identified with which stream id it belongs to so if you're going to send four get request and one post request you're gonna have five streams right into this tcp connection and that's called multiplexing so multiplexing if you did some uh, computer science stuff where you have multiple inputs blech, blech. these are supposed to be inputs damn it my hand ah multiple inputs coming this side and you have one input at the other hand and it looks like this blech, blech, like a triangle is it triangle it's not really a triangle it's like uh, 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 like that right so it's like multiple stuff and it comes back back to one right and that's extremely 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 efficient all right guys so that answers the questions very quickly i'm gonna i want i wanted to talk about that because that question really couldn't be answered in a youtube comment i tried but it's really challenging to answer these kind of questions in just one comment right so again guys ask me more of these questions because these are really challenging and make me really think about how i can present this concept to you in a very elegant and simple manner so that you can understand it challenge me if i said something dumb and uh, okay see you in the next one you guys stay awesome